Costa Rica is a global conservation leader. You see between 1963 and 1983, a lot of the politically powerful ranching families cleared a lot of the forest to graze the cattle. But between 1986 and 2006, they were able to grow their forest from 26% back to 51%. The, what's pretty spectacular about this is that they end up creating these eight mega reserved and they use that same biosphere approach where they had an inner uh, core and then they had those two buffer zones um, surrounding the inner core and what that allowed the country to do is still use those buffer zones and have that outer buffer zone in order to allow the indigenous people to log sustainably of course to have sustainable logging crop farming cattle grazing hunting fishing and still allow for some ecotourism but again that inner core is still a sanctuary and um, they allow for more species diversity um, and more species to kind of grow back and come back um, and Costa Rica also boasts they have 25 percent of their land is actually um, devoted to biodiversity conservation more than any other country and six percent of the land um, is actually reserved for their indigenous people. And here they say, um, yeah, quarter of land is nature reserve and natural parks, their global leader. And this has allowed them to earn one billion per year in ecotourism. On that note, um, in this particular summer coming up in June of 2015, don't forget, Miss T and I are going to be taking a group of students to Costa Rica for 10 days. So keep your ears posted and hope you will decide to join us. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous country. They, have, they went from having one of the world's highest of forestation rates to having one of the lowest um, so their business basically is based on this ecotourism and we can even go and plant banana trees and go see the sea turtle um, conservatories but what's also super cool about the fact that they have been able to have this huge regrowth is that they have been able to um, increase the tree population which of course will help with the reduction of carbon dioxide emissions as they trees when they grow remove carbon dioxide from the air so they're trying to be emission zero emissions by 2021 so that is pretty spectacular and pretty impressive hopefully y'all will join us on that trip so here's a picture of what their eight mega reserves look like. Um, the national park land is the um, part that is absolutely protected, and it's the, the double buffer zone is what you see in yellow, and that's the part that the, that the indigenous people um, are still allowed to go and enter, especially the second round, the second zone on the outer cores. So protecting wilderness is an important way to preserve biodiversity. So wilderness is land officially designated as having no serious disturbance from human activities. Uh, member Theodore Teddy Roosevelt was the first one to actually um, set aside any kind of U.S. land. He did this member of Pelican Island where he had Krogel um, protect the, the migrating birds and allow them to go to Pelican Island so they can actually breed. Um, then we had the Wilderness Act of 1964. But of course, um, when you have tried to set aside wilderness protection, you're going to have some controversies. And usually because folks want to use the, the wilderness for um, goods and services, typically. But we, people who decide to try to conserve it are trying to do so to preserve biodiversity and create these areas for centers of evolution so that we basically have this, the genetics, the gen DNA not escaping but by dying off. So it's important that we keep that DNA there. So more on the Wilderness Act of 1964. Uh, purpose was to protect undeveloped lands. 2% of the lower 48 uh, protected mostly in the West lower 48 states tenfold increase from 1970 to 2010 but United States still ranks about 42nd among all the nations in terms of terrestrial area protected and as wilderness in Canada is 36 and only four of the 14, 413 wilderness areas in the lower 448 states are actually large enough to sustain the species that they contain. Um, but in 2009, 2 million more acres will get got wilderness protection and 50% increase in length of wild and scenic rivers. So that's a plus. Uh, but what's important to know is that the most wilderness areas 
are threatened habitats in a sea of development and that basically what's happening is that it's very hard um, to get a roadless rule. In other words, federal regulations that allow undeveloped areas of national forests off, to be off limits to road building and logging because for decades we have basically politically powerful oil, gas, and mining and timber industries who want entry to these areas because again valuable commodities and resources are in these wilderness areas um, even though these areas these wilderness areas are actually public land they're owned by all of us citizens of the united states so these are our resources as well uh, but we now um, 